Hello, my name is Jason Holbrook, Sales Manager with Absolute High TN, and thank you for joining us for the Complete Guide to Sizing Injection Molding Machines. This is part five, screw geometry. So outfitting your plasticizer with the correct screw, non-return valve, and barrel can lead to a dramatic cycle improvement, reduces part rejections, and reduces premature wear on your plasticizer. Specifying the correct screw geometry, non-return, and barrel may be critical for the needed screw recovery and the homogenized melt. So know your materials before specifying your screw geometry, non-return valve and barrel exerciser when talking to your machine supplier. Know your compression ratio. We touched on this in last week. Amorphous materials soften gradually. They've got no defined melting point. They're slow to absorb heat. They're shear sensitive. They require longer transition zones and deeper channels with lower compression rate. On the Whereas semi-crystalline materials remain semi-solid until they hit a quick transition point. They have shorter transition zones, shallower channels, and higher compression ratios. The compression ratio is the difference between your feed flight depth and your metering flight depth. So if we look at a general purpose screw, you can see that it typically is going to be in the 2.5 to 1 compression ratio. Whereas an amorphous material is going to be more like 2 to 1 and a semi-crystalline material is going to be 3.1 or 3 to 1 or a little bit higher than that. So it's important to understand the types of materials you're running so that you have the right compression ratio on your screw. And how about your residence time? We talked about this earlier. This is the amount of time that the resin is in the barrel. And one of the common mistakes that molders make is they just divide the shot weight by the machine capacity. And this is wrong because it does not include the inventory that you have on your screw. And what if you're running a longer L over D screw, something like a 24 to one, that is gonna have a much larger inventory on that screw and that has to be calculated into it. So your feed zone, your transition zone, your mean zone, your shot volume, all have to be calculated into your inventory to know what your residence time is on your material. So if you don't do this, you could make a money in 40% of what you're residence time needs to be. So know your screw geometry. Most machine suppliers are going to supply a general purpose screw unless you specify otherwise. And this is a jack of all trades, but master of none. It gives you less homogenization on your material. It's often used in technical and poly oils and applications just fine, but it's necessary. It's the necessary screw geometry when you get into high wear resistant materials. You also might see a double flighted screw, and this is very similar to a GP screw with double the number of flights. And this gives you um, more throughput be, by separating the solid versus the molten material on your screw. And this is better for semi-crystalline materials uh, and would typically have a longer L over D. And then you have your mixing screw. A mixing screw will give you a much better homogenization uh, for color master batches. And this is typically a lower compression screw on standard L over Ds. And you can see in this illustration right here, you've got two different styles of mixer. You've got what's known as a distributive mixer, otherwise known as a pineapple mixer in this illustration. And then you also have the dispersive mixer, otherwise known as a spiral mixer. But there are all kinds of different mixing elements that different screw manufacturers make. And you'll wanna have that dialogue with them based on your material type application and cycle time. You also have your screw and you're gonna find faster cycle application and just get one homogenous melt. You have longer L over Ds, and you'll see it in larger tonnage machines running polypropylene, polyethylene, and polystyrene. I'm going to move my window over here to see another illustration. And what we're showing here is how a barrier machine or barrier this barrier flight right here allows the melted material to flow down the screw and be pumped down the screw while holding back the solid material, putting it in compression with the barrel. And this allows that material to be melted more quickly and pumped down the screw more rapidly. So this might be a screw that you need in larger applications where you're running faster cycles for a packaging reason. How about your screw materials and coatings? Let me move my screen back over. So, most general purpose screws are either going to be flame hardened or chrome plated. And these are somewhat okay for low abrasive and low corrosive materials. But as you get up to anything over 10 to 
they're going to prematurely wear out your screw. So you might get into a nitrided screw then. And a nitrided screw is a little bit more acceptable for abrasion resistance, but still very poor for your corrosion resistance. If you're going to get into very abrasive materials, you're going to want to get into a solid steel or an alloy for uh, corrosion resistance. So for your abrasive materials, you're going to be want to look for a PM9V or a PM stainless style of, of solid steel. This is excellent for abrasive, but still very poor for corrosion resistance, simply due to the iron content. Whereas if you need to buy a screw for corrosion resistance, you're going to want to look at some type of alloy material, a Hastelloy or an Inkalil. Now, this is totally unacceptable for abrasion resistance, but perfect for your corrosion resistance. And then you encapsulated uh, screws. Now, encapsulation is both excellent for abrasion resistance and corrosion, but it's a very expensive screw. These are materials that are uh, XC4000 or XC10000. And for all of these different screw geometries, you also have the possibility of doing flight hardening. And flight hardening is typically a cobalt or a nickel. It's really good for abrasion resistance, not necessary and very poor for corrosion resistance. So what you might see is on the top of the flight here, that's where you're going to have your cobalt and nickel flight hardening, where you might have a chrome plating on one side and a nitriding on the other. And how about your non-return valves? A typical non-return valve on most machines is going to be a three-piece non-return valve. There are also four-piece, free flow, locking valves. These are all accept have acceptable closing behaviors, and they can be armored for whatever screw geometry and barrel configuration that you have. But then you also have ball check valves. You're typically going to see a single ball check and sometimes a multi-ball check on larger tonnage machines where you are running materials like polypropylene and polyethylene. These are not very good for shear sensitive materials like amorphous materials, but they're very good behaviors. And then you've got other non-return valves, things like this valve here. So it's really important to evaluate the materials in the process that you're running, have that discussion with your material supplier and your machine supplier, and pick the right non-return valve for your application. Let's look at barrel coating. That's otherwise specified. Most manufacturers are going to provide either a nitrided or a bimetallic barrel. As far as the nitride is concerned, this is very poor for your abrasion resistance and completely non acceptable for corrosion resistance. Whereas a bimetallic barrel is acceptable for abrasion and okay for low levels of corrosion resistance. Now, if you're going to be running a very highly abrasive material, you're going to want to again get into tool steels, something like a D2 or a PM10V, and even a stainless. These are excellent for abrasion resistance. Now, again, completely not acceptable for any iron content materials like your D2 or PM10V, but if it's a PM stainless, you might have some capability of running corrosion resistant material in it. Now, if you're gonna run corrosion resistant materials 100% of the time, you're gonna wanna again get into some type of special alloy, the Inconel or Monolel or Hastelloy. This is completely non acceptable for your abrasion resistance. So we've got a couple of illustrations down here. This is your typical nitrided barrel, your bimetallic barrel. You can see the illustration uh, where you can see the nitriding. The tool steel line barrel, you can see where the tool steel is in the barrel. And then there's So you're in pressure and L over D. We've touched on this a couple of times in previous videos. The shot size is not the only reason to pick a screw. You've got to know what your cavity pressure requirements of your material needs and back figure that to know what type of nozzle pressure you need. As you can see here, a D screw might provide you the proper shot size in ounces or grams, but your injection pressures are rather low at the nozzle. You're at just under 20,000 or just over 20,000. And that might equate to a pressure drop through a hot runner system to something along the lines of 12, 13, or 14,000 cavity pressure which may not be enough for your application. So you might need to go with a A or B screw where the L over D ratio is better. So you've got a 22 to one or a 20 to one here. And you can see that C and D screws often provide the proper L over D and sometimes not enough max injection pressure. Whereas the A or B screw is likely to deliver a better L over D and max injection pressure 
but you might have to go up an injection unit size to get the required shot size and still meet all of the other requirements. So here again, we're talking about the L over D of your, your screw. So for any, for a given shot size, and let's assume that the shot size between the two, this L over D has a red residence time of 1.72, whereas the 24 to one has a residence time of 2.17. That's a pretty major difference in your residence time. And for some materials that may be in or out of your specification. So make sure you know what kind of L over D you have. On screw. Some of the key takeaways. Pick your screw geometry based on material processing characteristics. Know what kind of screw treatments are necessary for those materials. Consider what non-return valve works best for your materials and your application. Pick the necessary barrel linings based on your materials and screw type. And remember to consider your compression ratio, injection pressures, and L over D on your screw. In our up and coming videos, we're gonna talk more about fast cycle machines, auxiliary machine functions, and automation. We hope you've enjoyed this video, you found it informative, and if you'd like to contact us with further questions, concerns, or dialogue, please reach out to us on the number on the screen, or you're welcome to email me directly at my email that you see on the screen as well. We hope you join us next time, and we'll talk to you later. Thank you.